Brothers in Phi Gamma Delta, welcome to St. Louis. Uh, Connor, I appreciate the very generous introduction. A Greek philosopher, Heraclitus, said you may never step twice in the same river because new waters are always rushing by. I'm sure you'll agree with me that if in three years I stepped into the Mississippi River to our east, it would be different waters. What if I stepped into your chapter rooms in three years? Most assuredly, there will be different undergraduates. I put to you this question. Will I find the values of Phi Gamma Delta? Frankly, that depends on you. Your ability this weekend to achieve a deeper understanding of our values, of chapter operations, of recruitment, and of graduate relations will go a long way to determining whether the undergraduates which follow you follow our values. I want to share with you some history. Two fraternities and a drinking club. Phi Beta Kappa was formed in 1776 at the College of William and Mary. Phi Beta Kappa was and is a social and literary society. Phi Beta Kappa was actually created in opposition to the flat hats. I suspect none of you have heard of the flat hats. Flat hats were not very exclusive. They were a drinking club, which met nightly in the Raleigh Tavern in Williamsburg, Virginia. The flat hats are gone because there's not much value in a drinking club. Phi Beta Kappa is alive and well. Phi Beta Kappa stands for something admirable. Phi Beta Kappa is different from a drinking club. Phi Beta Kappa is exclusive. It is elite. It stands for personal academic achievement. It's composed of men and women of distinguished talents. In the spring of 1848, Six young men gathered in the second floor northwest corner of a boarding house just a half a block or so from the campus of Jefferson College. They founded our fraternity. Our fraternity also grew out of a literary society, not a drinking club. Our founders created a society, and I'll go back to the record, for men of distinguished talents, men with a high sense of honor, men who possessed laudable ambition. We are exclusive. We are elite. We exist today because our fraternity stands for something. Now, we have survived a host of adversarial events. The Industrial Revolution, the Civil War. I mentioned at the table, in this part of the world, we refer to that as the recent unpleasantness. <laughs> Social revolutions without number, scores of recessions and depressions, the Second World War, and even the counterculture of the 1960s. Phi Gamma Delta stands for more than doing things right. It stands for doing the right things. Our values, friendship, service, knowledge, excellence, morality, they have stood us well during even the most serious challenge to our fraternity and indeed the fraternity system as a whole. 
growing out of the counterculture of the, of the 1960s was an animus against people who were exclusive, people who were elite. Uh, if I may, a, a personal note. Towner referred to it. I s was called to active duty when the Soviets built the Berlin Wall and I served as an artillery officer in Germany. When I returned to this country in, in the mid-1960s, I came to an alien nation. I didn't even understand the language. The flower children were in full bloom. There was a hostility to structure. They were passionate about causes, but they were indifferent to the qualities of life that give life grace. There was no obligation to anyone else. There was no brotherhood. Meism run rampant. They were insensitive to the fabric that holds society together. Now, it is true, and I grant you, that powerful, positive cultural changes resulted. The expansion of women's rights, the civil rights movement, a better understanding of the freedom of expression and the political empowerment of the disenfranchised. It is also true that this counterculture spawned a virus of permissiveness, the widespread use of drugs and alcohol, an indifference to standards of personal conduct. The use of marijuana, LSD, other recreational drugs, swept throughout the campuses in North America with a devastating result. Only fraternities and chapters of fraternities which took responsibility for personal conduct survived. Significantly, it's a, the flower children, remember, no elitism, no exclusionary, these men and women became the tenured professors and administrators of colleges throughout America, and it became their aim to do away with exclusive societies, to do away with elitist societies, to do away with fraternities, Phi Gamma Delta. Despite these changes, our fraternity has survived and exists today because our values enabled us to survive these challenges, because our values make us individually better than we are. Friendship, service, knowledge, excellence, morality. Friendship, service, knowledge, excellence, morality. We survived because of these values and our standards of personal conduct. Our ritual binds us one to another. Our ritual makes us exclusive. We are elite. It binds us together and separates us from the others. We are a brotherhood. Our brotherhood survived because men of character cared. Character, brothers, still counts. If you have a successful academy this weekend, if you understand these values, if you master chapter operations, recruitment, and graduate involvement, when I visit your chapter rooms in three years, I will find the values of Phi Gamma Delta. I will find men of distinguished talents, men with a high sense of honor, men of laudable ambition. I will find friendship. I will find service. I will find knowledge, excellence, and morality. But it's up to you. Brothers, it's up to you. I'm from Missouri. Show me. Mighty glad to be a Fiji.